What's up, everybody? Ben Raza and Matt Gajewski here for Odd Shopper, and it is officially time to fill in our March Madness bracket, one of my favorite days of the year, and I know I can speak for Matt. March Madness and tourney time is just an absolute blast, a lot of money to be made, and of course, whether you're in the office pool, a big-time pool, or anything in between, you need to know how to fill out your bracket, and that is what we're here to do today, Matt. I know you got to be excited that the bracket has officially dropped. Yeah, we've been working towards this point all season long. Conference tournaments were really fun, but we have the big dance here, so I'm excited to get into these games. Absolutely. We've got a lot to get into. We're going to talk about all these teams, where the edges are had, and one of the easiest edges is the sponsor of this video, BetMGM. Sticking with us, they have a fantastic offer for new users. Bet $10 on any NCAA tournament game, win $200 if either team hits a three-pointer. Click the link in the description below to activate. It's a no-brainer. It's free money. You want to take advantage of that. And you also are going to get three free months of awesome a plus platinum upon that first deposit of at least $10 and your first wager. Terms and conditions apply, but that is a great, great deal. All right, man. Here we go. We're going to go region by region. We're going to break down the bracket. We're going to get your insight into these teams because unlike most people watching this video, you have seen all these teams. You have been betting, as have I, college basketball all year. So do you think that we have... Maybe some insight into some of these mid-majors, some of these dark horses that could potentially make a run? I think so. A couple of overarching themes I saw just quickly before we get started. I don't think this is the strongest crop of mid-majors, and there's a couple reasons for that. The first one is we had a lot of up transfers due to the new transfer portal regulations. Like teams in the past that might have had a stud like Wofford with Storm Murphy, a lot of those guys went to major programs. He's not Virginia Tech, and there's countless examples of that. And then we saw a lot of chaos already in the conference tournaments. And we know a lot of the smaller conferences do not get at large bids. So some of the better teams in those conferences did not make the tournament. A team like Toledo stands out. They got bounced early and Akron is the replacement. And we'll get into those as well. Poor Iona. It's true. Some of that. Iona, we'll yeah. Yeah, we can see what we have. All right. Let's get started. I will say if you're hopping in, you're new to the channel, you're saying, what is this? Welcome aboard. You want to support the show. Hit that like button, but more importantly, if you want college basketball, NBA, all the VODs and betting content that you're looking to find, just press subscribe. You'll join the community that is growing quickly and support this video. We appreciate it. Let's start in the West. We'll start in the top left. Let's get it going. This will be easy. This will take two seconds. Gonzaga and Georgia State. No 16 upset here, I assume. No, but just one thing on Georgia State. They were really injured to start the year, and this team's actually pretty strong. We look at their efficiency metrics. And they're a pretty decent team overall. So I think if you're like looking at the spread or something, I'll back Georgia State. But like you mentioned, I don't think there's anything to really look at for upsets. Yeah, not in the bracket. You mentioned, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little betting and there'll be plenty of betting content on this channel as we get closer to game time. The winner of that game, assuming Gonzaga is going to be that, will take on an interesting stylistic matchup. Boise State and their methodical tempo against Memphis, who's playing much better. What do you do in this 8-9 matchup? This is a really tough one. Memphis has played really well recently, but Boise State is a team I thought was going to win their conference. And I think they're kind of a disaster overall for this Memphis team. If you're going to pick an, an upset here, I think Boise is one to do so because Memphis is a slight favorite at this point. But is that kind of how you saw it too? What were you looking at in this one? Yeah, I, I did see it like that. The Mountain West is a tough conference to gauge. Um, but I look at this stylistically... I, eight nines are 50 50 toss ups a lot of the way, but I, I can get on board with what you're doing there. Um, yeah, let's let's roll with them. You want to roll with Boise? Yeah, I like Boise. Okay, yeah, I, I'm on board. All right, next little pod, we'll go down and then we'll go back and fill in. Uh, we've got the 512, always sneaky Yukon Huskies taking on a team that I've seen a good amount out of the whack. New Mexico State was the best team. They knocked off Abilene Christian, who's represented them uh, several times in the past years. Games in Buffalo, do you think New Mexico State is live here? I do not. How do you see this one? I don't think they're live either. They're a good team. I just worry about, you know, particularly inside UConn, uh, the bigs, well-balanced. They do have a, a solid point guard. I don't know exactly uh, how good they are, but I think here, this is not one I wanted to mess around with, so I'll go with UConn if you will. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get into this a little bit, New Mexico State – they do a lot of the things that UConn does, but UConn just does them better. So like rebounding, height, UConn is a team that's like pretty good with fouls. When you look at free throw shooting, stuff like that, all of it favors free, favors UConn in this spot. So when a team that is basically a carbon copy of UConn, but just a little bit worse everywhere, I'm going to favor 
the favorite in this spot. Next game, Arkansas and Vermont. It's just a five-point spread, and I, I think that's reasonable. Vermont destroyed every single team in their conference now. It's a very weak conference. I know Arkansas is a team that at times we've both been on throughout the year. Do you smell upset here, or do you think Arkansas just out-talents out them? So Vegas and these spreads are going to give us our best indications of when to look at upsets. So if you're picking one of the lower seeds, a double-digit seed, Vermont does fit the bill. But in this spot, you hinted at it. I don't think Vermont has the dudes to get it done. They played one of the weaker schedules in college basketball outside of their tournament. Their only good wins are against Yale and Colgate. Outside of that, they have losses to Oakland, who's a good team in the horizon, Maryland, double-digit loss, Providence, double-digit loss. So they literally have not faced anyone. And Arkansas is one of the most athletic teams in the country. The biggest risk with Arkansas is their head coach, who will bench their players if they foul. So just hopefully we don't have Eric Musselman shooting himself in the foot. Yeah, I, I definitely think Vermont, you know, a five-point spread, they're definitely live in this spot. But I can roll with the Razorbacks here. Uh, we'll find some tricky spots. Vermont shoots some threes. If they get hot, watch out. But, you know, it, it could be a tough spot. Moving down. Now we get the play-in situation here. How do you approach that? Obviously, we got to wait and see who Alabama plays. But do you think Alabama moves on kind of regardless? Yeah, so I, I ran some analytics on both teams. I think Rutgers would probably give them a better matchup overall. But in the game, the play-in game, Rutgers versus Notre Dame, I think Notre Dame wins. And when you have Notre Dame facing Alabama, neither team has a lot of size. Both teams shoot a lot of threes. Notre Dame in particular, they're a team that does not do very well with fouls. So I think Alabama can get it done in that spot. And I would like them more if they find Notre Dame. Yeah, I don't think uh, I'm going to be picking against Alabama regardless of who they play. I agree. If I was Alabama, I'd want to play uh, Notre Dame. But nothing for me there. On the bottom, they will get the winner of Texas Tech and Montana State. I think Montana State's actually a pretty good team. I just don't know how they will score like most teams. Texas Tech's defense is so strong. I'm not smelling anything near an upset here, are you? No, me either. Montana State's good on offense, and they're running into a buzzsaw of a defense, the number two defense in the country in terms of efficiency. So just a major step up when you look at them. And I mean, playing in the big sky – it's a completely different level of competition here. Montana's best wins are against Portland and North Dakota State. And I love the North Dakota State win, but I mean, anytime they face a step up in competition, Colorado, South Dakota State, even New Mexico, they lost. So easy one here. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough spot there. Nothing too crazy. Moving down, our most competitive game that we've talked about so far, Davidson and Michigan State. It's a 10-7, but it's actually a 50-50. It's just a one-point spread. Michigan State's slight favorite. I think Davidson has the slight advantage, but I think as the books are indicating, this could go either way. I just can't get over Michigan State's turnovers. At the most crucial times, they cannot get it under control. Tyson Walker is good, but I, I really I really worry about them if the game is tight. Yeah, I, I do agree with you. The issue is Davidson's not a team that forces turnovers. They're outside the top 300 in steals forced. So I, that is a that is an advantage that I think will come for a different team later on. But right now, you talk about turnovers. Davidson just can't force them, and I think that's the biggest weakness. You look to some other stylistics. Michigan State, I think, comes into this game pretty underrated. They have pretty stark advantages on the glass, huge advantages in rebounding, 61st to Davidson's three, or excuse me, 232nd, and then even level of competition. Davidson has one good win, and it's against the streaky Alabama team. Some pretty tough losses to teams like San Francisco and New Mexico State who are in the field as well. I'll be backing Michigan State, and I actually like them against the spread here. A little bit underrated, I think. Okay, we'll put in the Spartans there. I mean, and you, will... we can, we can, we can. No, no, uh, that's. Them. Yeah, no, no, I can live with that. I'm not, I'm not married. Believe me, I'm gonna have some egregious takes in this very video. I'm not, I'm not hitching my wagons to Davidson. I can live with that. Uh, the Foster I'm not gonna... Lawyer Bowl. Yeah, that's right, the Foster Lawyer Bowl. They're gonna be playing. I assume the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, do you have any objections? Because I don't know anything about Cal State Fullerton. They're good on offense, but I don't think it's going to matter against Duke. They, they can score a little bit, but overall Duke just massive advantages everywhere across the board, particularly in size, which is going to be a problem here. All right, so we got the first round. Now we go back to the top. Interesting matchup here. Gonzaga, Boise. Again, Boise wants to slow the tempo. I don't think anyone can slow the tempo against Gonzaga to that extent. No surprise for me. Any surprise for you? No surprises. All right, Gonzaga moving on there. Now, this is a really interesting game if we do, in fact, get it. Connecticut and Arkansas. You've mentioned the coaching woes at times for the Razorbacks. 
UConn's coach is just a one bad call away from being ejected at any moment. So that could come <laughs> into play. What do you see here? So I ran my model because I was very interested in this and it came out Arkansas favored by a half a point. So I think this opens as a pick em or minus one in either direction when the spread opens up. So basically as tight of a matchup as you can get. When we try to pick between them, UConn has a slight advantage in rebounding their fourth in the country to Arkansas's 37th. And I think that could mitigate some of the just raw athleticism we see from Arkansas at times. A lot of that's coming through Sunogo. And if it comes down to such a tight game overall, you have two teams excellent in free throw shooting. Both teams foul a lot, and they also draw a lot of fouls, carbon copies of each other, really. I'll tentatively favor Arkansas as the more athletic team in the better conference, but I do not feel good about it. How do you view this? Yeah, tough game. I, you know, a lot of buzz about the SEC being very strong. If we got this, I would pick Arkansas. Um I just, I, UConn is a team I just don't know. You've mentioned some of their personnel and whatnot. I think Arkansas, the way they play, if they can avoid the foul trouble, just a little too athletic, no day. I, I just, I like their personnel a little better. I'm going to give the edge to the Razorbacks. Yeah, same with me. I think it comes down to they're going to, UConn's going to try to run through Sunogo and Arkansas's 32nd in interior defense. Really tough matchup for them inside, whereas Arkansas can score in multiple ways. Is there any chance? that Alabama, who at times has flashed brilliant, certainly last year was a very strong seed, can break through this Texas Tech defense and cause problems here? I think so. Alabama's beaten the best of the best. They they've have. Beaten, they've beaten Gonzaga, but they've also lost to some absolutely horrific competition. They've lost to Iona, Memphis, Davidson, Missouri, some just horrific teams in there. What Alabama does is they shoot threes, and if they hit the threes – they're going to be excellent. If not, it's going to be a big trouble for them. And unfortunately, Texas Tech's pretty good at defending them. They're 52nd in three-point defense. I think this is going to be a slower game. They're definitely going to, Texas Tech's definitely going to try to slow Alabama down. And I think the advantage is actually on the Texas Tech side, but I don't feel great about it. I think this is another one that opens inside three points in, in one way or another. I think probably in favor of Texas Tech, but I think they have edges just with the way they're going to play defense. What do you think? Yeah, I Texas Tech is just, you know, they don't have a superstar, but they're well-balanced and defensively they can just eat you alive. Alabama's range of outcomes is gigantic uh, just because of the way they play. So don't mind if you want to go trendy. We're going to start off a little conservative, I think. Don't worry, we're going to have some upsets in this bracket. I'm okay putting Texas Tech through if you are. They're the healthiest they've been all year. Throughout the entire season almost, they've had either Terrence Shannon or Kevin McCullough out. Kevin McCullough has now gotten three games under his belt since he returned from injury. Just having a healthy Texas Tech team, I think, is going to be big here as well. Last one, you mentioned that you're pretty high on Michigan State. Do you think – we always see, seemingly see a two go out. Uh, do you think this could be a spot? Because Duke, to me, is an enigma. I have no idea how good they are, to be honest. I think Duke is pretty good. And similar to Arkansas, I think some of their issues are coaching. In the Syracuse game, Ooh. they had an enormous advantage – in the paint and they shot over 23s in the first half didn't shoot well but I mean when you have an advantage like that you can't exploit it it's going to be a problem at some point I don't think Duke goes out in this spot I think against Michigan State they can handle them on the glass in particular Michigan State strong inside but Duke has some dudes down in the paint with Van Caro and especially Mark Williams if he's playing 30 minutes which he has been recently that's going to give the Spartans a ton of problems and a Spartan team that's not very good in the foul department all right Chalk so far. Now we're getting to the, the thick of it, though. We've got Gonzaga. We've got Arkansas. I'm not going to use an upset here. I, I think Gonzaga rolls over them as well. I do, too. And I, I don't like Gonzaga all the way this year. I'll just say right now, I'm not going to pick them to win. But I think they did get a pretty easy draw as far as who is in their bracket. So for them to come out of this, having Duke as the two seed, I think, is pretty nice for them. Having Arkansas and UConn cannibalize each other, very nice for them. And I'll pick Gonzaga here. What are you doing on the bottom? Texas Tech and that defense against Duke and that talent. I'm still going to favor Duke here. It's, it's closer. Texas Tech's faltered in a lot of spots. And I don't think they have the athletes to compete with Duke when Duke is at the top of their game. So a very chalky top left. Do we change it up here? Even though taking Duke would not be chalky. If this is the game that we, in fact, get, I'm taking the Zags out uh, to represent this region. What are you doing? Duke beat Gonzaga head-to-head. -head. Good. They're not going to beat him twice. 84. Yeah, I mean, I don't it was know. It like seasons ago. It was. In that, in that beginning of the year, Gonzaga lost to Duke. 
They lost. Well, they've lost to St. Mary's now too, and they lost to Alabama. I don't think the Duke and the Alabama losses are very good, and I honestly don't think St. Mary's is very good either. I would pick Duke in that head-to-head. Oh, okay. You want to take the Blue Devils to knock off Gonzaga? I am not picking Gonzaga to win. I'm fine if you want to make them go to the Final Four. No, we can change it up. Like I said, wins. this is not a this is not a, a chaos bracket right now. We're gonna have some some sneaky teams, but let's take the Blue Devils out. So first region up, we have the two seed. Duke emerging. Let's go to the bottom left now and take a look at what we've got. So this is Baylor's region in the east. They play Norfolk State. So that's unfortunate for Norfolk State. I do want to ask you, because we don't need to analyze this this game. Does Baylor have the the horses at this point? Talk about banged up. Uh, What do you look at them? Do you think they're the weakest one seed? Probably at this point. It's tough because when they're fully healthy, I really like this team. And I think they might get LJ Cryer back. This is something we'll have to monitor throughout the week. But he actually tried to return and play a game midseason, but he had to go back out. And I don't know what the health is like with him at this point. But they did get Flagler back. That's huge. They're still not at full strength, but they're definitely getting healthier. And it, just looking at what their head coach has said, he said Pryor's or excuse me, Cryer's probably going to come down to later in the week to see if he can play. So I think we get him back at some point in the tournament. Sounds like he's going to be a game time decision for the first round. And I'm honestly okay if they hold him out against Norfolk. I'd rather have him against the winner of Marquette UNC. And who is that going to be? I like the Tar Heels. I'll put it out there right now. Uh, I think they will handle Shaka Smart's gang. You are wearing a Marquette hat on this very (laughs) video. What do you think about your boys? Can't back them. UNC 13th in rebounding. Armando Baycott is going to absolutely eat this Marquette front court. That is 178th. UNC 35th in offensive efficiency. Marquette 150th. UNC on defense 90th. Marquette 177th. I'm a little surprised this is still a three point spread. Me too. I, I, this is a game that I am looking to bet. And again, we'll have betting VODs uh, coming up and, and certainly all that content as well. But I'm going to end up betting North Carolina and I'm certainly picking them. In this spot, moving down to 512, St. Mary's gets the winner of the play-in game. What are you doing here? Is it the Gales over whoever, or is it like if Wyoming wins or whatnot, or whoever wins, uh, they could cause problems? I think Wyoming wins the game against Indiana. Honestly, that game is going to be really difficult. A lot of post-ups in that spot. I think it could come down to which big man fouls, but I think Wyoming gets it done. Between the two of them, I think... Wyoming could give St. Mary's a little more trouble than Indiana, but that's going to be a difficult one to solve overall, I think. I think St. Mary's, they have some pretty good wins, including Gonzaga. That's one where I'm probably trying to back them here. Yeah, I'm pretty high on them. I like their conference. I like their team. Uh, I don't know who they'll be playing, but I'm not sure it's going to alter my strategy here. And we'll always have time to adjust later in the week once we see that game, but I'm going to go with the Gales here. The team that I'm not high on, I'll be honest, is UCLA. But you mentioned that Akron is not even the expected team out of the MAC. I think this is not, this is the, if I could pick a 13 seed to play, it would be Akron. Sorry. So for that reason, I'm going to go with UCLA. What do you make of the Bruins and in this game? I will say UCLA is getting healthier. They've played a lot of the year with like Tiger Campbell's been injured. Hawk has sprained his ankle at one point during the year. And we just saw, Johnny Juzang, he fell off a scooter and hurt his hip. Ah, the scooter. Yeah, but Akron, like you mentioned, they were the four seed in the MAC. They ended up beating Kent State for the lead after, you know, Toledo got upset, the team we thought was coming out of this. It's kind of a lame duck team. I think UCLA is the team here. Agree. Texas, Virginia Tech. I don't even think this is an upset. It's a pseudo pick them. I like the 11 seed, though, uh, Virginia Tech. Clearly, they're playing extremely well, but more so, I can't back Tech. There's just something not right with Texas. In the Big 12, champ- uh, not championship, in the tournament, they were up 40-22 to 22 at halftime against TCU, lost that game. They've got all the talent in the world. They just seemingly can't put it together. I'm not going to say they put it together in this tournament. What about you? I don't think they do either, and this is a very risky pick because Virginia Tech lives and dies by the three. If they hit their threes, they win. If they don't, they're in trouble. But they're one of the few teams here, if you look at expected wins, a lot of teams that make the tournament overperform this. Virginia Tech actually underperforms. So I think they're underseeded and underrated in this spot. When you look at Texas's defense, it's much weaker against three-pointers. That suits Virginia Tech. 
Neither team is good at rebounding. Virginia Tech is 300th in rebounding. So at some point in the tournament, I think they get clipped by a larger team. That's not Texas. Texas plays extremely small. And then we look at how these teams do fouling. Texas is fouling constantly, and they're not drawing a ton of them. Virginia Tech does the exact opposite. They almost never foul with their big men, and they draw a ton of them with Aluma and Mutz. A lot suits Virginia Tech here. Yeah, so there we go. A minor, a minor upset. I wouldn't even be remotely shocked if that actually happens. They will get the winner of Purdue and Yale. Purdue is a team that I've had strong positions on the all year. We're going to get to them in depth. I don't think we need to spend a ton of time on this specific matchup. Just too much talent for the Boilermakers. No, I just want to make fun of the announcers in the Yale game yesterday. If you guys were watching it, saying <laughs> Yale is going to be a tough team to play next week. I don't think so. Purdue ninth in height. Yale 352nd. There's absolutely no way Yale handles Trevion Williams or Edie. I actually like Purdue against the spread. Not definitely excited to play Yale. Definitely not. Well, they're they're due to cover. They have not covered in 10 straight games, which is insane because I'm pretty sure I have bet them in almost all of them. Lucky there's live betting out there uh, to get some better positions. What is what is Yale's best win? I bet Yale a lot this year, but I mean, I thought it was going to be Princeton like most people. So yeah, I don't, I don't think that Yale is going to do much of anything here. You mentioned the height. It's a 15 and a half point spread. Um, so you don't even say it's saying remotely competitive. No, absolutely not. Okay, good. I don't I even know how good. they score. Hopefully they get shut out. That would be a, a top news story if Yale actually doesn't score. Murray State, this is an interesting game. Murray State and their 30 wins against San Francisco, the Dons. One of the teams I think is wildly dangerous. But this is a tough matchup. Murray State doesn't really play anyone, but they win a lot of games, obviously. San Francisco, love that coach, love what they do. I'm going to back the 10 seed. Where are you going? I like Murray State here. They're very tough to evaluate. Their, their losses occurred to Auburn, obviously a, a notable loss there. And then they lost a game to East Tennessee State, and they shot 6% from three, 6%. That's not I, good. I mean, occasionally you'll have those games, and that's why – we very rarely see teams with one loss or undefeated teams. But like you mentioned, they haven't really played anybody. Their notable wins are against Memphis, Chattanooga, Middle Tennessee, who probably should have won their conference, and Bellarmine. So it's not like Murray State's played a strong level of competition. Conversely, San Francisco has. Now, they've dropped some pretty egregious games themselves, including Grand Canyon. And I don't think that conference is very strong overall. But we've seen the line flip, and now San Francisco's the underdog. I actually think they have some advantages here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride with this 10 seed here. Uh, I think they can pull the upset, minor upset, BU. They're going to end up playing, unless you think that the Peacocks of St. Peter's have some magic up their sleeve, it seems like Kentucky is going to absolutely destroy this team, correct? Yeah, I'm a little sad. I thought, I thought this team would be live in a better matchup. We St. Peter's, just a little aside, they have the best defense of a 15 seed in the last 15 years, just looking – at the analytics behind the scenes. The problem is they're 269th in offensive efficiency, and I don't see any way possible they score on Oscar Sheebway and company here. Yeah, no, that's going to be a problem. Uh, I never know. All right, going to the top. I'm going to defer to you, but I will say I think that North Carolina is live to beat Baylor here. I think this will be a competitive game. I don't think that Baylor's front court with the losses they've suffered uh, and just their team overall right now is firing on all cylinders. Do you see that happening? What do you want to do here? How dangerous do you think Baylor is to get clipped? I think Baylor is going to get clipped at some point. There's a couple things I really don't like about this Baylor team long term. They're 238th in free throw shooting. So when it comes down to close games, that's not a metric you like at all. But overall, I do think they could beat a team like North Carolina. Overall, I'm a little worried Baylor is a team that will turn the ball over a little bit here. North Carolina is pretty good at forcing steals. They haven't always done so, but I think that's something they've improved on recently. I still think I'm going to go with Baylor, just the overall advantages they have. But I do think this is closer than people think. Okay. Yeah, we can go Baylor. That's fine. Think of a way to knock them out, though. I'm not high on this Baylor team uh, in general. So they are going to play <laughs> the winner of St. Mary's and UCLA. You mentioned you're not overly high on the West Coast Conference. UCLA is maybe getting healthy. I thought that they sh not should have beat Arizona in the sense – that they, they had it and blew it. They just didn't get it done. Arizona went nuts in the second half of the championship game. What do you see happening in this spot? I still think UCLA is getting healthier. They have pretty stark advantages, particularly on offense. And I think it's going to take a team with some pretty good size to clip 
UCLA, like UCLA doesn't play with a big man. A lot of times it's going to be some combination of Cody Riley and company. But right now, when you look at rebounding, St. Mary's definitely is not the biggest team. They don't rebound very well. They're 256th in rebounding. UCLA is still 65th in the country, even despite their size limitations and the players they haven't had on the floor this year. I'm not very high in the West Coast Conference. I'm going to pick UCLA. All right, so we got the Bruins moving on. They're going to take on Baylor. And then on the bottom, we've got, you mentioned how dangerous Virginia Tech is. They shoot a lot of threes. We know they can knock off good teams. Purdue's got all the talent in the world. What happens here? Do the bigs for Purdue handle it? Does Ivy get it done? Or do you smell a 11 seed upset? I definitely think you could see an upset here. Virginia Tech, again, they're going to live and die by that three. Purdue is 180th in three-point defense. Now, this goes both ways. We, we talked about Virginia Tech potentially losing to a team with size. Purdue has so much of that. Virginia Tech, 157th in height. Purdue is ninth. Rebounding, Virginia Tech, 300th. Purdue is 32nd. I like Purdue a lot, and I think their stumbles down the stretch have come a lot with the pick and roll. I don't know that Virginia Tech can really exploit that against Purdue. I'm going to pick the Boilermakers here, but again, Virginia Tech, if they exploit that three-point matchup and they get hot, you could see another upset here. I really hope not. I agree that it's live. Purdue can lose to anyone. We saw North Texas last year knock them off. I'm going to go with Purdue just because this is a team that I really think can put it together in the right situation. I hope we get that. I like San Francisco. I just don't think that Kentucky is a great matchup. I don't see it here. Do you? I don't see it either. I think, I think Kentucky is a very strong team, maybe a little underrated. They, they're another team that dealt with injuries all throughout the year. Ty Ty's back. Now Sabir is back. Yep. It's going to be tough for them. All right. Baylor and UCLA. I would pick UCLA. I don't even think Baylor is going to make it this far. Is this a spot that Baylor gets knocked out or do you see them going on again? Man, I, Again, with Baylor, it's a lot of it is injury dependent. I don't think this is the best matchup for UCLA against a healthy Baylor, but man, it's, it's really hard. We just don't have that information right now. With, with Baylor at full health, I would, pick, I would pick Baylor here. Do you want to operate under that assumption or what do you think? I just, uh, there, you're right. There's a lot of ifs and, you know, there's going to be a lot of things. And we're going to talk about this a little later in the show, some strategies and whatnot that we, we're going to operate under. I just don't know if we see that. Honestly, even if some of these guys return, I think when you, you're you're kind of parlaying things, because I think UNC's got a chance to beat them. Now UCLA's got a chance to beat them. I can go one more with Baylor. I don't have them getting past the bottom anyway. Uh, yeah, me, me either, too. All right, put them just in that. there. Fine. We'll live a little chart. You can always change it up depending on your contest pool. What happens here? This is going to be a hell of a game if we get it. Purdue and Kentucky, two super strong teams. I think Kentucky has the athleticism to really take advantage of Purdue. We've seen that cause a lot of problems with them recently in the Big Ten tournament and down the stretch for them in the regular season. You have the best big man in the country in Oscar Shibwe, and I think there's a lot of things he can do to just out-athlete guys like Zach Eady. I actually think Trevion Williams would be a much better matchup for him, but we know Trevion Williams is not playing more than 20 minutes because of what Painter does as a head coach. I think Painter costs him here, and Kentucky gets it done. That is the Achilles heel. I don't understand how they don't understand that they've got to find better ways to optimize those guys. Uh, I hope you're wrong, but I understand Kentucky, Baylor. I, I'm picking Kentucky. I, I, clearly, I can't pick Baylor now. I assume you think that Kentucky <laughs> can, can handle them, or do you want to keep going with your, the defending champs? No one says that, but Baylor is the champs. No, I think, I think Kentucky should have been a one seed over Baylor just based on raw talent. And just for fun on the back end right now, I just ran my model to see what it would give a spread between Baylor and UCLA. And as Baylor is a one and a half point favorite on a neutral floor. So I think, man, that's as close to a pick as you could get. So if you want to pick a dog, I think UCLA is fine, but Baylor's slight advantage is at full health. But in this spot, Kentucky's coming out. Kentucky's coming out. So we got two, two seeds coming out on the left side of the bracket. Now we've alluded in this video, you know, what type of pool are you in? Are you betting these games? You know, we're all filling out the bracket and having some fun. But if you're looking for some of the goods, we've got a package for you. We've got the March Madness 2022 subscription. You can get it. It's on the screen. You're going to get college basketball DFS projections if you're playing. An optimal bracket tool that is such a valuable thing. Even if you're playing in a small office pool or you're playing in some of these giant ones, the player usage, if you're betting props or again, and then the daily betting picks, me and Matt, 
round by round, right in our Discord, Discord expert Q&A. If you have questions on a game, if you have questions on a situation for your bracket, all of that will be answered. Use the promo code MADNESS for $10 off at checkout. Just an absolutely phenomenal deal, Matt. I know you've been pumping out the VODs on this channel and, and with brackets, size of, of pool is really important, is it not? 100%. I think that's the main thing you need to consider. If you're just in an office pool with a 10 people or less or something like that, 20 people, I would largely be picking towards what Vegas is indicating. But if that's not the case, that's where I think you can start to make at least some educated upsets here. And we've talked about a few already and tried to work through some of those hypotheticals, but it all depends on how many people you're playing against. Yep, absolutely. So that's something you can take advantage of. Alex and Matt and the whole team has done a great job building out this package. Uh, and you should really take advantage with that promo code. All right, two down, two to go. Let's go to the top right. Let's go to the south. We've got, talk about no respect. Arizona plays the winner of Wright State and Bryant, my team, Bryant, who, not, who shouldn't be in the playing game, but they are. Uh, obviously, Arizona is going to destroy them. Do you have a feel on the playing game? Talk to me about Bryant. You know, my guys, they made it out. They got in a huge fight with Wagner, leading scorer in the country. You got to like my Bulldogs a little, right? Yeah, I bet Brian. I, I like, I think you this know. is probably the best playing game of all time, honestly. I agree. Started, These are decent teams. Neither of them should be in the playing game. And I would like them against, you know, if one of them could have gotten like a 13 seed against a, a lame duck higher seed or something like that, that would be enough that I'm interested in. Unfortunately, we have the 16 seed playing game here and they're facing what I think is the best team in the country when healthy. So, man, tough to see. Make sure you tune into this playing game. It's going to be a banger, but there's no way to overcome Arizona well said on all fronts honestly Brian reminds me a little of that Oral Roberts team they've got an alpha score but it's not you can't do anything with it here all right Arizona will play Seton Hall or TCU I know eight nine games are always difficult this is just I have no idea I'd be lying if I said I have any feel on Seton Hall has been an anomaly all year dealt with some injuries what do you do here I I like Seton Hall in this spot but it's okay. It's tough. This is probably the best first round matchup in terms of what we're going to see on the floor. Now it's not going to be low scoring, but if you, or it's not going to be high scoring, it's a 129 and a half total. But if you just like good basketball, I do think this is the best game. Seton Hall does have advantages. They're 59th in defensive efficiency. They're 140th in offensive efficiency. TCU is a team that struggles to score. They play good defense, but I think the way Seton Hall plays can be a problem here. You look at where these teams match up stylistically Seton Hall is a team that's really underperformed in terms of shooting their 273rd in field goal percentage. That is not something I expect to continue here with some of the players they have on their team. They're in a strong buy low spot after one of the worst runouts in the regular season. So I'm happy they actually made the tournament. I think they could be sneaky. All right. Seton Hall moving on. Another weird game. Houston and UAB, a 5-12. Houston had just, you know, major injuries all year. Guys lost for the season and they just keep Chugging along, Kelvin Sampson, they win their conference again. They get a UAB team who's pretty talented, but the way Houston plays defense, I think it's going to catch up to them at some point, just the losses they've suffered. I'm not sure it's going to be here, though. I agree with you 100%. Love Houston in this spot against UAB, just weaker competition overall. Now we're getting sneaky. Illinois, who killed me last year after Loyola knocked them out, they take on a team that if I was them, I wouldn't want to play. So I thought this was going to be Furman, potentially, and it probably should have. But Chattanooga is a very good team. There is no doubt about it. I think that the talent gap will ultimately get Illinois through. But to me, this is a type of team with Chattanooga. Don't be surprised if this is a close game. I would take the seven points, seven and a half out there uh, if I had to bet this game. What are you doing here? I'm taking Illinois. I think they're in a really strong buy low spot. If you look at the shot analytics on their most recent game they played in the Big Ten tournament, a game they should have won just based on the shot quality they took. Chattanooga hasn't played anybody good the entire year. Their best win is against VCU by two points. The other teams in the field or notable teams they played were Murray State, who was an 11-point loss, and Middle Tennessee State, who was the number one seed in their conference, got upset, 12-point loss. So I'm not backing Chattanooga. I, I, they can shoot. They're very good on offense, but Illinois is just the more talented squad. Colorado State and Michigan, I, I like a lot of people, didn't think Michigan should have made it, but now that they are in the tournament – Despite them being a dysfunctional team, I, I certainly think they're live uh, as the 11 seed here. Colorado State's got a lot of wins. Mount West pretty strong. What do you see in this spot? 
it's a really tough matchup for Colorado State with with Michigan playing through Hunter Dickinson. Michigan's really good at defending the pick and roll, and that's what Colorado State tries to do. Michigan's 22nd in pick and roll defense. This is an extremely difficult matchup for Colorado State. I wish they would have drawn a better opponent overall. And you look at some of the stylistics here. Rebounding, Michigan's 117th. Colorado State's 311th. Size drastically favors Michigan. And and Michigan should have moved on further in their tournament. They were absolutely demolishing until a second-half comeback really cost them the game. They are dysfunctional, but they're just the better team here. Books say it as well. You don't see that too often, but they are the favorite. Uh, And I get it. So we'll go Michigan. Tennessee and Longwood. Saw Longwood uh, beat up on Winthrop. Pretty impressive team. Just tough, tough spot. Tennessee knows what they're doing. They've got talent in that backcourt. They've got, they've just got everything you need. I don't see them being really tested here. Yeah. And one of these nothing to see here spots. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got another weird matchup, Ohio state and Loyola Chicago. Now it's not to me the same Loyola Chicago that we've seen and sister Jean and a lot, probably a popular 10, seven here. I just, Ohio state all year has just been, I don't know what to make of them. Liddell on the inside. I'm going to lean with the Buckeyes, but you could convince me otherwise if you wanted to go with what is a minor, minor upset. Yeah, Ohio State played the Big Ten tournament without Zed Key and Kyle Young. I expect at least one of them back, probably both. They're a team that's just much stronger than Loyola. Loyola's best wins this year outside of their conference, probably Vanderbilt. They won by 11 points, and it was a shorthanded Vanderbilt team. They did beat San Francisco by five. That's pretty good. Otherwise, the only good teams they played to, they lost. Michigan State, lost. Auburn, lost. I really only see five notable teams on the schedule, and they weren't even good in their conference. They were number four coming out of their loss. They they beat Drake, the number three team, to win the conference. So it's definitely not the Loyola we saw last year. Yeah, I'm on board. I think, again, name recognition, a lot of times these become trendy upset picks. And sometimes you want to zig when people zag. You know what would be super not trendy would be picking Delaware, but that would just be stupid uh, because Villanova knows what they're doing. They shoot – Villanova, the way they shoot threes, uh, just the amount is truly insane. But they're a good team. Obviously, Connor Gillespie has been there forever. Uh, I don't see anything happening here, do you? No, this is one of the situations we alluded to at the beginning of the show where we had chaos within the Colonial Athletic Association. The number five team in the conference, Delaware, came out of that. So another nothing to see here. Wish the better teams like Iona's in that conference. If Iona had won, I think they would have been live, but unfortunately they got upset and we're stuck with lame duck in Delaware. Blue hens, baby. Fighting Joe Flacco's. Uh, all right. Arizona against Seton Hall. Let's dig in to what we know here. During the Pac-12 tournament, Arizona's point guard was wearing a boot. What, when do you think he could be back? Do you expect him back at all? They're not going to need him against Bryant or Wright State. Do you think they need him here? Do you think he could be back by uh, the second round? I think he could be, but honestly, I think they probably play it safe with him. They just absolutely rolled Colorado and UCLA, two teams I think are better than Seton Hall without him. And they have a pretty good backup in Kyer. He dealt with foul trouble in their last game. And Pele Larson's a pretty strong freshman for that team. Seton Hall also is probably going to have a lot of trouble with the multiple players in the front court of Arizona. Seton Hall a lot of times is going to win with their size through Roden. Luckily, Arizona has multiple bigs that are capable of taking care of that. Arizona has two seven-footers. You mentioned Kyer, six-year player, double transfer, experience. He knows what he's doing. They've got, you know. Um, all the things you want, obviously they're going to need their point guard long-term, I think, but I'm not sure it's going to matter in this spot. Will they play Houston or will they play Illinois? This is the best potential second round game, I think. Do you, what do you think? I mean, these teams are extremely strong. I wish Houston was just a little more like Sasser and those guys. It's They're incredible, but you can't replace that. And, and it does cap their ceiling. Talk about a pseudo pick them. I would love to know what you think this line would be, because to me, you could tell me either team would be favored and I wouldn't push back. I'll run it, but there's a run couple that. things I think that favor Illinois. Houston's actually really, really bad in terms of free throw shooting. So that's, that's definitely something I think could be an issue for them. It's, it's just that Illinois is not very good themselves. I, I ran it and it came out with Houston minus three. I think a lot of that, a Houston at full strength. But to get in the stylistics of this game just quickly, Houston's basically playing with five guys in the court because they lost Sasser and Tremont Mark. 
And we've seen them lose a step a little bit down the stretch this year. Now the AAC is not the best conference. So Houston's still been able to handle most of their competition, but against teams that are athletic and can run Illinois with a healthy Curvello back definitely is that Illinois has a major advantage with Kofi Coburn inside Houston doesn't play with a ton of size. They do have some in Fabian white, but he's just not the same caliber player as Kofi Coburn. You look at height metrics, Illinois 23rd in the country, Houston's 95th. Houston's going to ride and die with their offensive boards, a really risky team and going up against Kofi. As long as Kofi's not in foul trouble, I think that's going to be a big advantage towards Illinois. It, I have them as a slight dog if I were to just run this line right now, but I still think Illinois has the dudes and they're a little underrated this year based on injuries they've sustained. Yeah, I, again, I think at some point, I, I've tried to short Houston a lot at times during the year unsuccessfully, but when you get in a tournament setting, at some point, these personnel losses are going to catch up to you. And I think it's probably with Illinois here. And certainly it would be with Arizona. Um, all right. Going to the bottom, Michigan, Tennessee. I think there will be people who have Michigan going out to the Sweet 16. I won't be one of them. Will you? I won't be either. I think a lot of what Michigan does well, Tennessee can mitigate. So Michigan's basically living through Hunter Dickinson. If he can have a good game then I think Michigan's live. And even in, in games where he's played well, their teams have been able to overcome them. You look at how Michigan's lost recently. Tennessee's going to stretch you. Kennedy Chandler, Vescovy, Josiah Jordan-James, and even Zeigler. These are all really athletic guards that I don't think Michigan can really play with. Overall, you look at defensive efficiency metrics. Michigan definitely struggling on defense. They're 231st. Tennessee is a team that's streaky on offense but they really outperform expectation against weaker competition. So I think we see that here and Tennessee moves on. Ohio State and Villanova. Uh, again, Villanova, they do live and die by the three at times. I, I don't really have much to say on Ohio State. You mentioned they were missing some key guys during their tournament. Maybe they get them back. Do you think that's a 7-2 that could be sneaky? Not really. Again, I think Villanova, when they lose, it's got to be against teams that shoot well. And Ohio State is not that for the most part. They have a pretty good field goal percentage. But outside from three, when they hit their threes, they're solid. They just don't take a ton of them. They're outside the top 150 and three-pointers taken. They're a team that, you know, with their size and EJ Liddell, they still don't have the advantage in rebounding here. Villanova is 164th. Ohio State's 201. So I think as long as Nova hits their threes, this is a spot where, where they can get it done here. Ohio State does play pretty good perimeter defense 32nd. But overall... They're just the stronger team. Villanova, that is. Arizona and Illinois. Uh, some memorable games in the in the way back machine from these two in the tournament. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. What do you see here? This is where I think if Arizona truly is without their, their point guard, it could be an issue, but this is a while away. So how do you evaluate this? Agreed. And we saw Kirk Carissa tweet today a picture of his ankle. It definitely doesn't look good. But he talked about trying to get healthy to play in the first round. I think if he has, this would essentially be two extra weeks of rest. Maybe he's not 100%, but I think by then he'd probably be more likely to give it a go. Again, Illinois is going to ride and die through Kofi Coburn and Arizona with their two seven-footers. They match up extremely well against this Illinois team. I'll be backing Arizona. And then who will they play on the bottom, the Tennessee Vols or Villanova? There's a really tough spot. I think the game overall is probably going to be pretty slow. We know Nova's going to try to slow them down, create a lot of volatility here. Tennessee, not the best shooting team. I mean, just looking at field goal percentage, they were 234th this year. That's a spot that I think with some positive regression, they could definitely capitalize on. Villanova on defense, they're not the same team. They're 72nd in defensive efficiency this year, and they're a little better on the perimeter. But we know Tennessee has some athletic, bigger guys like Josiah Jordan-James that can shoot three as well as play inside the paint and when we look at rebounding we mentioned Villanova 164th Tennessee has no issues with that they're 67th in the country here so I think Tennessee could get it done I, I like that too I, Tennessee very impressive team they're so strong at home when they got on neutral courts or away from home definitely a downgrade but I was impressed what they just did uh against Kentucky just a talented team so let's put the Vols nope. in there the, Go Nova ahead. also doesn't face like a lot of press in their conference and they've struggled when they have like pressing Gillespie is a huge issue for them. And Tennessee forces the sixth most steals in the country. This would be, you mentioned, you know, Houston uh, and Illinois potentially just being an all world game. I know when you get to these rounds, you get fantastic matchups across the board, 
Arizona and Tennessee, though, that would be an absolute banger. Uh, I hope we see this. I think we could, honestly. I, I think this is a very reasonable position to take. You mentioned that you think Arizona is as good as they come. Is the size, is all the talent. Uh, the coach, what, let me ask you about Arizona's coach. Do you worry about that at all? It's not too often that we see kind of an unknown guy taking over the helm and getting this deep. The roster is amazing. I think he's done a solid job coaching. I didn't like that he held out Kyer, but the game wasn't really close against UCLA, so I don't think they needed to. I, anytime a coach will hold out guys for fouls, I think that's a poor way to play because every possession counts the same in basketball, and apparently a lot of these coaches do not under, understand that. But we look at Tennessee. They're a streaky team themselves. We talk about streaky teams like Alabama, and like Tennessee has some pretty bad losses. They've lost to Texas this year. They lost to Alabama themselves. They lost to Texas Tech in a double OT game. And a lot of that comes because of the poor shooting performances they've had. Again, they're outside the top 200 in field goal percentage. I think against Arizona, that's going to be a huge issue, especially an Arizona team that can beat you in so many ways with their size. Yeah, I'm not the biggest Rick Barnes guy to begin with. So uh, give me the Wildcats of Arizona to come out. The first one seed. So we've got two twos and a one. And then we go to the last region in the bottom right, the Midwest. The Kansas Jayhawks uh, should just be rolling off whoever they play. I don't even – oh, yeah, they get Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and uh, Texas Southern. I don't know anything about Texas Southern. I've seen Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. They knock off Nickel State, who was one of my teams. Sad. Uh, we don't need to spend time on that. Do you have interest in that playing game at all, or is that one you, you don't really want to mess around with? I haven't bet it yet, but I think there's probably some value in Corpus Christi. You look at, you know, like shot quality projects wins and losses too. Texas Southern is a team that's drastically outperformed their expectation this year. And they've had a, a couple pretty bad losses. I think they're a team that we could fade in Corpus Christi. They were the fourth team in their conference, but they actually performed a little below expectations. <laughs> I like Corpus Christi. Okay. And then they'll get destroyed by Kansas. And then Kansas will play either the Aztecs of San Diego State or the Creighton Blue Jays who lost to Villanova uh, in their conference tournament. Another interesting matchup, San Diego State plays phenomenal defense. Their offense, though, is pretty bad. Do you think they can score enough in a tournament setting to move on here? This is part of the issue with the way they play, and they're going to lose at some point, like almost certainly against Kansas, but Lowering possessions like this adds volatility. And Creighton does have some advantages, and it comes particularly in size. Creighton is 27th in height. San Diego State's 118th. Rebounding Creighton's 32nd. San Diego State is 144th. So if San Diego State misses some of these shots, and we know their offense is bad, and Creighton can hit the boards, they have a chance to win here. Overall, Creighton on offense has not been very good this year. Losing their point guard, Nemhart is not good overall. But I do think they have some advantages. I'm okay actually picking Creighton for an upset, but this is basically as close to a 50-50 as you can get. Yeah, I'm with you. I have no problem picking Creighton here. It's not going to matter because I, I really trust Kansas. Now we're getting sneaky. I think this could be a little pod that gets a little crazy. Uh, I know we've been pretty conservative here, but again, depending on the size of your pool, if you're looking for some upsets or you're in a pool where you get bonus points for upsets, I think these teams are all very live, all four of them, to come out of this little Buffalo in New York. And we got Iowa and Richmond, the spiders of the A-10. Iowa's looked good. They're banking in winners. Uh, they've got an alpha in, in Keegan. What do you make? You know this team really well. Do you think they're in, in any danger here, or is there just too much firepower offensively? Not really. I wish Richmond hadn't come out of this conference. So you, you look at Richmond. They were the sixth seed in the A-10. So Which there's the Bonnies a, came out. I missed yeah, that. There's team. absolutely no reason this team should be here. So you talk about lame duck teams in the tournament. Richmond's another one of them. Like, they did get two teams through. Luckily, Davidson made it. The one seed that should have beat Richmond. But, like, this Richmond, the sixth seed in the conference, they do not stand a chance against Iowa. Iowa has immense size advantages. Richmond is 296th in rebounding. How does that – how is that going to work against Keegan Murray? There's – this is a huge advantage for Iowa, which is part I of the, really, like, I, I came into the tournament wanting to fade the big 10 and they all drew like these amazing matchups. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm looking to short them in some points. I like Richmond, not in the game per se, but just as a team, well-balanced. You mentioned there's some serious disadvantages and against Iowa. I don't think this is the most ideal matchup. Uh, five twelves are always what, what everyone on Richmond is 27 years old. That helps. Again, you got that experience. I know they've been there forever. It's just one of those teams 
Like they're just a weird team in the A10 this year. It's just been an odd, like Dayton was super young. St. Bonaventures was super old. A, a lot of weird teams in there. I'll put in Iowa, uh, but if they get clipped, I wouldn't be shocked. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. And this is very trendy. So I want to talk to you about it. Providence, who wins every game by one point, take on a team that I really like in South Dakota State. South Dakota State is number one in the country in three-point percentage, 44.2%, four points percentage points higher than the second best team. They shoot a ton of threes. They don't play anyone in the summit, but they haven't lost in a very long time. Do you think that they can handle Providence? Is this ripe for an upset, or is this just the public digging too much into a team and going uh, a little haywire with this spread, which is really coming down? No, no, I think it's a it's a good spot to pick an upset. Two points bet spread in favor of Providence. I mean, Providence has lost to some horrific teams. They they lost to Virginia, who's not in the field. They lost by 30 points to Marquette. And I mean, they lost some of the usual suspects in the Big East then. They have some pretty good wins. They You mentioned the single digit wins. Wisconsin, single digits. Northwestern, they beat St. Peter's. Texas Tech, single digits. Rhode Island. These are their most notable wins. And you look at this South Dakota State team, you mentioned they're, they're very good at three points overall, number one in the country. Providence has the number one three-point defense in the country. Some other things that South Dakota State does well, they're 99th in transition offense. Providence is 11th in transition defense. So this is kind of like strength on strength for both teams. You can say the same thing about Providence on the other side and the way they play matching up against South Dakota State. I think if a lot of people are going to be picking this as the trendy upset in your bracket, if you have a lot of people going with Providence could actually give you some leverage. But if I'm just picking the straight up who I think is going to win, it's South Dakota state. Agree on both fronts. I think South Dakota state is going to win this game. If this becomes like an overly reverse chalky, like trendy upset, you could probably leverage by taking Providence. That's all personal, but I'm, I'm going to look to bet South Dakota state. I think they have more than enough to deal with that and get it done. Minor upset. Okay, here we go. LSU, Iowa State. LSU fired their coach. A lot of these 11, 11 seeds seem very live, including Iowa State. I think I give a slight edge to LSU, but if you want to tell me you want to go Cyclones, I wouldn't push back at all. I don't think Iowa State should be in the tournament. Okay, that, that's a tough scene. Tough start for them. I mean, neither of these teams has played well down the stretch, and I think that's the biggest knock against them, but Iowa State's offense is horrific they're outside the top 250 in offensive efficiency they can't score anywhere they can't rebound they're outside the top 300 in rebounding they're going to be very they're going to have their hands full with Tari Eason and company like Darius Days I don't know how they how they're going to be able to handle either of those guys on the glass LSU is a team that's very aggressive that's going to get them in trouble a lot they turn the ball over a ton they get in foul trouble a ton Tari Eason fouls out on every other game but if you have LSU playing to their full potential, not turning it over, and not to mention Iowa's pretty good at steel, so that is a path to their victory. It's, just, it's funny because Iowa State's the exact same. They turn the ball over a ton, and LSU is the number one defense in terms of turnovers forced. Overall, I think more advantages point towards LSU, but this is as volatile as it gets with Iowa State being horrific on offense, and LSU just like can't keep them hand, their hands to themselves. Yeah, two really not great teams. I'll, I'll go with LSU. Uh, that's fine. They play, of course, they give – you boys again, right in Milwaukee. God, poor Colgate can't catch a break. Colgate also is a very good three point shooting team, and they take on the Wisconsin Badgers. You know this team better than anyone. Any trouble here? I wish they weren't playing a home game. Like, this is the spot where Colgate was a team I definitely wanted to back. We saw them in the tournament last year. They almost upset Arkansas in the first round. They're number two in the country in three point shooting behind your Jackrabbits. Yep. Wisconsin's not great at defending the three, they're 102nd in three point defense rebounding neither of these teams are very good so I think at some point if Colgate were to make a run like they're 266 in rebounding or excuse me they're 101st in rebounding I think that would give them an issue but they're actually a little better than Wisconsin in rebounding here it's just like Wisconsin playing on at home like what are we doing here yeah I know that that really does suck like that that is an unfortunate break you told me one of the 14 seeds wins I definitely think it's Colgate over the other three but most likely I think none of them win I did, again, neutral floor. I think if you were to pick an upset, it would be Colgate, but just like, come on. Like Marquette isn't playing at home. Some of the other teams in this conference aren't playing close to their stadiums. Why is, why is Wisconsin playing in Milwaukee? Reasons unknown. Uh, USC and Miami, 7-10 matchup. 
I lean to the Canes a little bit, but again, this is just a strong 7-10 game, both talented squads. Yeah, I think biggest advantage comes to USC in rebounding. Nine, Miami is one of the smaller teams in the country. They're 337. They're, they're essentially playing with four guards on the floor at all times. I think that's going to be an issue against Mobley. But at the same time, we've seen Miami, just with their style of play, they're going to shoot a ton of threes. They're not great at them. But when they hit, they can hang with teams like Duke and some of the teams that have good size, and we've seen it routinely this year. If we, we want to pick Miami as an upset, I definitely don't hate it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with them. Again, I, I've gone back and forth on this game. I don't think it's a huge uh, spot because I don't have them beating Auburn, who plays the team that really didn't deserve to be here. Sorry, Jacksonville State. They weren't an automatic <laughs> bid. They lost in their conference tournament. They weren't an at-large. They won on a loophole because Bellarmine can't go. Uh, I assume you think Auburn just rolls over them. Yeah, no question. All right, to the top. We've got, uh, what do we have? We have Kansas and we've got Creighton. Kansas looks pretty strong. I, I, I've grown on this team. Obagi's fantastic. They've got the bigs. I'm not the biggest big Bill Self guy. I don't see a problem here, though. Love that they have Remy Martin back. Arizona State uh, alum. Remy Martin doesn't shoot a lot, but he does command the team. Yeah, he's a great facilitator. They're just better with him on the floor. They are. They are. So no problem there. Can the Jackrabbits keep it going? I think they can. Their biggest issue is going to be on defense. And I would love to see what the total is in that Iowa South Dakota State game because One, you have two, 180. Neither team plays defense. Both teams play well above average in terms of pace. And they're two top five offenses. That is going to be an amazing game if you like excitement overall. I think the Jackrabbits could do it again here. Again, I don't think this is going to be a sleeper. I think if you're going to see people picking upsets, it's going to be South Dakota State as a as a trendy sleeper pick to get to the Sweet 16. But ultimately, it's a pretty easy draw for Iowa, in my opinion, if this is what comes of it. I think Providence would be a more difficult matchup for them. But in this instance, I think you could see the Jackrabbits going to the Sweet 16. Let's do it. We got we to mix it up a little bit, and I'm with you. Uh, Jackrabbits moving on the way they play. That game, seriously, the total would be flirting with like 180, which is banana land. Um, LSU and Wisconsin. I, I would take Wisconsin just because I, I really think that whoever they play is just a dysfunctional squad and, you know, Davis and co will do enough here. I agree with you. I don't want to LSU turns <laughs> the ball over a ton. Wisconsin is amazing at forcing turnovers. And then on the other side, Wisconsin almost never turns the ball over. LSU really lives with that aggressive defense. They play Wisconsin, a veteran team for the most part, Johnny Davis. I hope he's healthy. That's the biggest question for them at this point. He looked horrific in the big 10 tournament with another extra week of rest. I think that could definitely benefit him again. LSU has their advantages. They have advantages on the glass. If they can exploit that defense, there's ways to beat Wisconsin. It's just, they play such a volatile game. I'll go with the more consistent Wisconsin Badgers. Auburn and Miami, any chance that the Canes move on again or is just too much talent? You know, Auburn, unbeatable in the jungle. These are obviously neutral floor games. Uh, too much talent for Auburn, though? I think so. Same advantages that USC theoretically has. Auburn has them as well, just a little bit better with the players. Tenth and rebounding for Auburn, Miami 337. Those athletic bigs, I think, eat Miami's guards. Cinderella story ends for the Jackrabbits here at Kansas just too much. They will find a way to neutralize the hot shooting. Uh, I think if, I mean, clearly, if this is the road that Kansas takes, you couldn't ask for an easier draw to the Elite Eight. I agree 100%. I'm with, I'm with you on Kansas. And on the bottom, honestly, I think if you're Auburn, pretty easy draw yourself. I think that this is a, a, a one-two that I think is going to happen. I really do. I would love to see this game. I, I just want to see Wisconsin take on a team with these athletes. People yes. make so much of the five-year seniors that play in the Big Ten, the future rec league stars. Auburn has legit NBA players. I know Wisconsin is Johnny Davis, but I would just love to see how this Wisconsin team tries to defend the athletes of Auburn, and I don't think they're going to be able to. Kansas can, though. Um, what do you think here? This is a tough one. I think Auburn has edges if they play to them. They have not recently. And they're, every one of their losses has come away from their home stadium. And that includes neutral floor games, which is what they'll be playing against Kansas. Tough one here. And like we mentioned, Kansas is getting healthier. Ultimately, I think the biggest weakness for Kansas is on the interior. You're going to have to try to defend Walker Kessler 
and Jabari with Jalen Wilson and big Dave McCormick, who's honestly been splitting time a lot with Mitch Lightfoot recently, way more than I'd like. I think Auburn has advantages here if they can take advantage of him. That's a risky pick, but I honestly like Auburn okay. in this spot. All right. You're, you're back in Kansas, I'm guessing. I am, but I, I you know, again, uh, you got to start to visualize, like, where would we be different with this bracket if this is how we went? And Auburn coming out, I think, would be a way to do it. You know, we don't have any crazy. And I think more often than not, it, it's misguided to say, like, I got to find a seven seed to go to the final four. Like, how are you going to do that? Yes. Uh, that would be nice, but at the same time, more likely than not, you're going to be drawing dead. So I could see that. And I guess, you know, as we're going to get to the final four in just a second here, you, are you high on the SEC? I mean, everybody has talked about the talent, Kentucky, Tennessee, Auburn. These are teams that you seem pretty comfortable at least winning a couple games at minimum. I am. A lot of it comes down to what, like they've been beating up on each other badly, but when we saw these teams in non-conference play, they were beating some of the best teams in the country. You look at the SEC Big 12 rivalry. That gave us a pretty good glimpse with a strong level of competition across the board how these teams were going to fare against each other. We saw teams like Alabama knocking off Gonzaga. Like Gonzaga, a team everybody is very high on. They faltered in multiple places this year against teams that I think are, are largely questionable in a field that has a lot of parity. Losing to Alabama, losing to Duke, losing to St. Mary's. Those aren't things you want to see out of your number one overall seed. So I am high on, on the SEC just based on what we saw when they weren't fighting each other all season long because, man, I think some of these win-losses would have been much better in other conferences. Final four time, and again, if you're enjoying this, hit that like button. If you want more content, subscribe. Stay tuned for me and Matt throughout the week, giving you picks all tournament. We will have you guys covered here. We've got the Duke Blue Devils, and we've got the Kentucky Wildcats. Uh, what do you see here? Coach K, everyone will be talking about, can they send him off with a W? I would say no. Uh, I hope Calipari would end that dream. But do you think they could march to the finals? How do you break down the Boo Bud matchup? Two questionable coaches, <laughs> largely viewed in um, positive light by the media, facing each other in this spot. If Oscar Shibwe fouls, he will not play in the first half. But he has massive advantage against the front court of Duke. And that, that's saying a lot because Duke is pretty strong in the front court. But I think Sheboy does have advantages over Van Caro and Mark Williams. Again, we don't know that Mark Williams is going to play a lot of minutes here. And then with the guard play, Kentucky just has some veteran presence with Severe Wheeler. I think Ty Ty Washington getting back healthy at this point. He's now played over 30 minutes in multiple games, which is fantastic. He was playing mid-20s for a stretch there. That's all going to be fantastic against a Duke team that's been healthy all season and faltered despite their health. I'm with you. I think that Kentucky, again, I'm... Uh... The injuries, Shidway is unbelievable, but I, I do think that they can get the better. And I also think that there's a much better chance that Duke gets clipped before this. Thing. I like Kentucky's road a lot better. And you have to start thinking about that um, when you're talking about bracket strategy. On the other side, Arizona and Auburn, that's a big boy game. Uh, clearly, I'm going to assume that Arizona is healthy. Uh, they've got the bigs. They've got the athletes. Auburn's got the athletes. Another great game if we ever got it. Where would you go? I would go with Arizona just because they're actually a pretty good team that matches up against Auburn. Well, we talked about the athletic bigs a lot, and that gives you such an advantage in college basketball. If you have seven footers that can move and both, both of these teams do Walker Kessler has been excellent, but that's been a huge advantage for them in a lot of spots this year. Now with him potentially being, I, I don't want to say completely mitigated, but with him at least, you know, being in a spot where, Maybe it's a neutral matchup. I, I think that is going to be an issue for this Auburn team overall. And we've seen them struggle against even lower level of competition, honestly. Arizona is an unbelievably talented team. When they turn it on, there is nobody better potentially. So I can get there. I've already mentioned they've got multiple seven footers in that front court. They've got everything you want. They've got the Pac-12 player of the year. Arizona Wildcats march to the championship game to take on Kentucky. Kind of feel like I know where you're going, uh, but tell the people why Arizona is going to be cutting down the nets. Yeah, they just match up well stylistically against so many teams. Look at their entire body of work. They face a very difficult level of competition in the Pac-12, and they did so a lot while they were injured. You look at some of their losses. I mean, they lost to UCLA midseason. They had Tabellas playing just about 15 minutes in that game, coming back from injury his first time. 
lost to Tennessee, a very, very close affair against a streaky Tennessee team. And then they beat a lot of teams in this field. They beat some good teams in non-conference. They beat a Wyoming team that you and I are excited about by 30 points, beat Illinois, a team that we're very excited about. And they beat teams like North Dakota State, who just challenged for a title in their conference by almost 50 points. So it's a team that has just been downright ridiculous and they've been slaughtering competition. It's not close wins for them when they've, when they've been in these situations. Extremely, uh, you know, explosive offensively, but much better than like the defense of a Purdue type team. They can still D up good tempo. They've got everything. Uh, I have no problem with this pick Arizona. You know, I make a bunch of brackets. Arizona is going to be one of my most common championship teams. Uh, I like them. I think if the injury breaks their way, we could see this come to fruition. Not bad, my friend. You feel pretty good about final thoughts on this bracket. Yeah, and one last thing I want to say. You, we, you talked about us picking a chalky bracket throughout. I think something that people get wrong a lot is chasing the upset, like chasing the George Mason upset, and then end, ending up picking too many upsets. Yes. We have Vegas lines as a phenomenal indicator of the likelihood of these teams, teams winning. Use it to your advantage and be smart when you pick your upsets. You don't need to pick George Mason to the Final Four to win your home league bracket. You probably don't even need to do that with people, like if you had 100 people in your bracket. So just be smart and don't go crazy with your upsets. You don't need it. Well said. And again, that is why I can't speak even more highly of some of the tools that we've developed in this March Madness package. Talking through the games in our Discord, seeing the optimal tools and figuring out okay, now's the time to maybe take a shot. And then other things, you'll be amazed how quickly you can box someone out just with a couple of small tweaks and upsets of an 11-6 or a 12-5. Nothing crazy, not a 16 beating a one. Most people end up making the mistakes. And if you just play solid defense metaphorically, uh, you can actually end a lot of people in your pool without doing much. So I'm on board there. If you have questions, Hit us up at Matt underscore Gajeski on Twitter at JazzRazDFS or better yet, catch us in our Discord. That'll do it for us, folks. Again, hit that like button on your way out. Thanks to Matt for hopping on and doing this. You're going to see plenty of us here on the Odd Chopper channel breaking down these games in full. Hit us with those comments. Subscribe to the channel. Good luck, everyone. Thanks to Chris Behind the Glass managing that bracket phenomenally. Can't wait for these games to start, and we'll talk to you guys soon.